All right, so I'm gonna introduce our first speaker today. Our first speaker is Dr. Jordan Abbott. Uh, as I said, she's an oncodermatologist here at Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center, and she special, specializes in the treatment of cutaneous malignancies, as well as the management of cutaneous side effects of our cancer therapies. Uh, she's gonna be talking today about genetics and melanoma, so please welcome Dr. Jordan Abbott. All right, thank you. So first off, I just wanna ask how many people in this room have had genetic testing? Okay, a few. How many of you are unsure if you've had genetic testing? Okay, so I'm Jordan Abbott. I'm a dermatologist here at Banner MD Anderson, and I care for many patients with melanoma. I found that this is sometimes an area of confusion for my patients. Sometimes when I'm seeing them, I may recommend that they have genetic testing performed. And sometimes the patient may tell me, I think I've had that done already. I'm not quite sure. And so I'm hoping to dive in a little deeper today and clarify some of these concepts. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start off by going back to ninth grade biology and covering some of the basics of genetics. So we know that the human body is composed of millions of cells. And within each of those cells of the body, you have your DNA or an instruction manual that codes for all of the processes that go on within your body. So when we look in at the cell, we see this double helix structure, that's the DNA, and it's wound up into these structures called chromosomes, which are in every cell of the body. So what exactly is a gene? A gene is just a segment of DNA. It's just referring to a portion of the DNA that codes for something specific. So you could think about a gene for eye color. I like the analogy of a cookbook with lots of recipes in it. So a cookbook contains instructions for how to make many things. So that could be thought of like the DNA has the instructions for every all the processes and proteins your body needs to make. And a recipe is the instruction for something specific. So that's gonna be like the gene that's coding for something specific. So if we have a normal healthy gene, we're gonna expect that that's gonna result in a good normal protein product. And if the gene has, is defective or has a mutation, it may result in an abnormal protein or no protein at all. So going back to our analogy, if you have a good recipe that you're able to follow the instructions, hopefully if you're a good cook, you'll get a good product that you're expecting to get. However, if you have a recipe that maybe got a little water on it, you can't read the instructions so clearly, now you don't have a guarantee that your product is gonna be what you desired. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna talk about cancer. What even is cancer? So we talked about all of those cells that are all over the body. Normally those cells go through a process of replication and cell division to make our normal healthy tissues. Cancer is when this, pro this process gets disturbed and one of those normal cells has some DNA or genetic damage and it continues to replicate and then pr produces this mass of cells or what we call a tumor, and that is cancer. So if we look at this cross section of the skin, we have some healthy, normal skin tissue on top, and then we can see that reddish brown tumor, which could be a melanoma. So throughout an individual's life, we're exposed to many things in our environment, like UV rays from the sun, and some lifestyle factors that do influence a person's chance of developing cancer. On a cellular level, this is happening when these environmental or lifestyle insults are coming in and actually breaking or changing the DNA. So when we think about cancer and DNA damage or mutations that happen, there's really two different types. If we look on the left, we can talk about somatic mutations. So at the top of the diagram, we see a healthy sperm and an egg that are coming together to make an individual. And we have a person who it, throughout life is exposed to some things in their environment that cause some DNA damage. So here we see the sun's rays just causing localized. The, the diagram is showing this red area where there's localized damage. Notice it's not affecting all the cells of the body and it has no potential to be passed on to the children. However, on the right side, we see what's called a germline mutation, and there the sperm actually has the mutation in it. So now all the cells of the developing person are going to contain this mutation. 
And since it is affecting all the cells of the body, it does have the potential to be passed on to offspring. So this relates to cancer and that most cancers are what we call a sporadic cancer. They're due to those environmental lifestyle factors as well as age. And that's where we have a DNA damage that occurs and it's just affecting a localized area versus in a hereditary cancer, we're talking about an inherited risk factor, or inherited mutation. And this does put individuals at a higher risk for developing cancer. So when we talk about gene analysis or genetic testing or molecular biomarkers, there's a lot of terms that can be thrown out and there's multiple ways that those are relevant for melanoma. So we're gonna jump into those. So first off is gonna be personal genome testing. We know that the vast majority of melanoma is due to those lifestyle and environmental factors that we discussed earlier, about 90%. However, there are 10% of cases of melanoma that are thought to be due to an inherited gene mutation or a risk factor that's putting someone at risk for developing melanoma. So we call this hereditary melanoma or familial melanoma. And again, this is only about 10% of cases. And this is when someone is inheriting a mutated gene that puts them at increased risk of developing melanoma. People who have this genetic mutation are thought to be have about a 60 to 90 percent lifetime risk of developing melanoma, depending on which gene it is that they have mutated. And at the bottom, you'll see some of the implicated genes. And so here we're talking about this germline type of mutation. So someone inherited this from birth, it affects all the cells of their body, and they do have the potential to pass it on to their offspring. So who are the people who should consider genetic testing? Your physician may recommend genetic testing for you if you've had three primary melanomas. So that means three separate melanomas on your body that were completely unrelated to one another. Or if you have a family history with two or more relatives that have had melanoma or pancreatic cancer. And then if you have had a family member who's actually had this type of testing and they were testing positive, then you may wanna have the testing yourself. And why would someone want to have this type of testing or how to have this type of testing? So you have this, your physician would usually recommend this for you, or if you ask about it and you're a good candidate for the testing, you'll be referred to a genetic counselor. The test is usually a saliva or a blood sample, and it gets sent out and the report will do an analysis of those genes that are most often implicated in these hereditary or familial melanomas and report back if there's a change in those genes that could be putting you at an increased risk. And why would someone wanna have this done? So this can really influence lifestyle choices that someone makes. My patients who are known to have these types of predispositions are much more vigilant about skin protection. It's also helpful for determining screening frequency. So most people who have found out that they have this type of predisposition will be seeing a dermatologist regularly for full body skin exams. And it's important to remember that a positive test does not necessarily mean that you will develop cancer. It's just talking about your risk for cancer. So maybe some of you have tested positive for a genetic mutation. What can you do with that information? So that mutation informs your risk of developing melanoma depending on which gene it was. It also can tell you if you are at risk for other types of cancer. And that can help with screening guidelines if you need to have your skin checked at a regular interval and then also any other types of cancer um, such as pancreatic cancer. This can also be helpful for informing family members that they may be at risk. And sometimes family members decline testing and they don't want to have testing themselves, but they should still be appropriately screened. Okay, so now we're going to move over into another way that gene analysis can be relevant to melanoma. So here we're going to be talking about the somatic type mutation. So this is now focused on isolated DNA damage that has occurred and it's not at all areas of the body. It cannot be passed on to offspring. So as a dermatologist, when I am evaluating someone's skin, I am seeing many lesions that look like this. This is a benign, healthy mole. This is a spot that we do not need to do anything about. No intervention is required. However, sometimes when I'm examining someone's skin, I may see a lesion that looks like this. And this one is very concerning. There are multiple colors. It has an irregular border. I'd be very concerned that this is malignant and recommend a biopsy for my patient. 
However, for dermatologists, we often, often encounter these challenging lesions that are more indeterminate. They are not clearly benign, but they're also not clearly malignant. And that poses a challenge. What do we do with these? So your physician may discuss with you, we could go ahead and do a biopsy. We could monitor with serial photography and dermatoscopic photo photography and see if there's any changes. But there's a relatively new technology called a pigmented lesion assay. And so this is a little patch. So it's a, a way to non-invasively test. And it looks at the genes just on that top layer of the skin of that mole to determine if the gene expression is more consistent with a benign mole or with a melanoma. So it's pretty easy to perform this type of testing. You identify the lesion that's suspicious. You apply that adhesive patch and send it out. And the results that you get back can help to guide the next steps. This can be really helpful if a patient is reluctant to have a biopsy. You would get these results back that tell you if the genes that were expressed there are more consistent with a benign lesion or something that could be melanoma. Um, one of the benefits of this technology is that there's really no specialized training required. So this could be really utilized for primary care physicians who may not have as much experience with pigmented lesion analysis. Another way that genes or gene analysis can be related to melanoma is with the actual testing of the melanoma tumor. So again, we're talking about these somatic type mutations. And then we can look at this for both prognosis and treatment of melanoma. So when we're thinking about prognosis for melanoma, we can go back to the biopsy specimen of when you had the melanoma diagnosed. And when they reported on the biopsy, they looked at many things. They looked at the depth of the melanoma. They described some characteristics of it. But we can take that same tissue and run a test on it that's looking at the genes that are expressed. And based on those genes, determine independently of the depth and other um, visual features that were seen under the microscope, what is the risk for recurrence or metastasis? And this type of testing can be helpful for determining if you're going to do lymph node testing at the time of the excision of the melanoma. So this is just an example of a report. This stratifies patients into classes of low, intermediate, or high risk for having a recurrence and can be helpful for determining those decisions about lymph node biopsy. So we can also look at genes when it comes to treatment for melanoma. So this is a little bit of a busy slide, but we see on the left that brown melanoma cell and on the top right, that blue T cell. Many of you have probably heard of the term immunotherapy and immunotherapy is really the concept of activating our own immune system to fight the cancer. So normally our immune system fights off foreign invaders. Like if you had a virus in your body, your immune system should be fighting it off. Well, your immune system should be fighting off cancer too. That is foreign and it's something your body doesn't want, but sometimes your immune system is not responding fully. So immunotherapy is a way to stimulate that flu T cell to then fight the melanoma cell that's next to it. On the other hand, there's this type of therapy called targeted therapy where we're actually targeting the melanoma itself itself. So as you see, there's this little pathway that's displayed within the melanoma cell and all the cells of our body have these mm -hmm. pathways that they go through. So we can do genetic testing that's looking to see if someone has a mutation in somewhere in this pathway. Not everyone with melanoma is gonna have a mutation in this pathway, but if they do, we can target it with some targeted therapies. And so that's the term targeted therapy that you may have heard is when we can actually target this melanoma cell from replicating and dividing and proliferating. Okay, and the last way that we're gonna talk about gene analysis in melanoma is for DNA testing for surveillance. So this circulating tumor DNA testing is sometimes referred to as a liquid biopsy. This is a test that can be performed from the blood. It's a blood sample. And the idea here is that the melanoma that maybe is on someone's arm is as that melanoma is growing or decreasing in size as it's changing, it's releasing little fragments of DNA out into the circulation. And if we remember the DNA in that melanoma, is gonna be different than the healthy normal DNA of all the other tissues of your body. So that DNA is not gonna exactly match the normal DNA that's in your blood. So we can test the blood to see if we're finding any fragments of DNA that 
that are representative of that tumor. And this can be really helpful for detecting relapse in someone who's in remission or for monitoring response to treatment in someone as they're starting and going on their therapy. So in summary, we talked about a lot of ways that genetics or gene analysis can be related to melanoma. The first type that we talked about for the hereditary melanoma is the one that is the inherited risk factor and that can be passed on. All of the other ways that we talked mm -hmm. about are really looking at the tumor itself to look at the genes and um, that can influence the testing for melanoma as well as the treatment decisions and surveillance. All right. Thank you for your attention.